the thing that can, change, that can change the world is the gospel of Christ. I don't have the time to preach the sermon that I had prepared because it would take like two hours to finish it. And I know you are in a hurry and some of you are tired and need to work tomorrow morning. But in the book of Luke, you can read it at home. You can find the story of this man who was a demon-possessed man from gathering. He was a total mess. He was a total wreck. He had many, many, many troubles because he had many demons, many demons in him. Bible says that he was trying to kill himself. He was beating himself and marking his body. He was crying desperate. He was crazy. For any good purpose, he was dead to the world because he was of no use. If we study the world carefully, we can find many characteristics of the people without Christ today. Of course, they are controlled by Satan and his demons. That's why they are in sin. He was without hope. He was depressed. He was suicidal. He was in favor of nudity. He was responsible because he didn't have a place to dwell. He dwelt with the dead. He rejoiced with the matters of death. You see, today, it's, of, it's very popular to see people liking the matters of death. All of those zombie movies, all of those Twilight movies, all of those Harry Potter movies dealing with witchcraft, dealing with vampires, dealing with zombies, dealing with werewolves, and all that kind of stuff. That's dead people, you know? That's dead people. And when people rejoice in that, they are dwelling with the dead. Actually, the Bible says that anyone who has not Jesus in his heart, who is not saved, He's dead. He's dead because he is in sin. Only those who have Jesus are really alive. As a matter of fact, all of those without Jesus who are lost are zombies, real zombies, because they are dead without Christ. And a Christian who dwells in the world is like this man dwelling with the dead. He liked to be naked, to run naked. There are many Christians who like to show their body with the way they dress themselves, the, the way their clothes are. There are many Christians who like to mark their bodies to play those games that are so popular on the internet, like the blue whale, and all of those games, computer games that deal with uh, monsters and killing people and all that kind of stuff. You see, this man did all of these things because he was possessed by demons. Many Christians, even though they are not possessed by demons, they are still influenced by them because they pay attention to them. Bible says in that story, the book of Luke chapter 8 and book of Mark chapter 5, that when Jesus came to the shore of that land, that man recognized him immediately. So he ran to him and he bowed down and worshiped Jesus, calling him Son of the Almighty, of the Almighty God. So he knew who Jesus was, but he didn't know Jesus. He was a religious man. If he was a Baptist, he would come to church every Sunday morning and every Sunday evening and every Wednesday night. He might even bring his tithe, but he wouldn't be saved because even though he knew about Jesus, he didn't know Jesus personally because he didn't have a relationship with him. When Jesus saw his condition, the only thing he did was command those demons to leave that man. 
And although the demons bargained something, they obeyed Jesus and that man was cleaned. That man was healed. The book of Luke actually says that he was healed. As soon as Jesus spoke the words, the demons departed out of him and left him alone, free, saved. And after that, the men that were taking care of the uh, pigs there, of the swine, they ran to the city and brought more people to see what had happened. And when they came back, they could see in the distance that the same man that before was a total mess, that before was a total wreck, he was totally transformed. First, the demons had departed out of him. Second, he was sitting at the feet of Jesus. There was two things that transformed that man's life. Number one, he received salvation from Jesus. As soon as Jesus spoke the words, he was free. And second, he received the influence of Jesus in his life. So he called Jesus Savior, but he also called Jesus Lord. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him, learning from him, listening what the Lord wanted him to do. See, many Christians receive salvation, but they don't render their lives to Jesus. They don't make Jesus their captain. They don't make Jesus their pilot. They don't make Jesus their Lord. So they don't walk with Jesus every day of their life. They don't sit at the feet of Jesus. That, that is why, even though they are saved, their lives don't show any change. They continue loving the world. They continue dwelling with the dead. They continue running naked. They continue depressed. They continue sad in their lives. They don't have joy. They don't have peace. They don't have hope. Why? Because they are not sitting at the feet of Jesus. The third thing is that he was clothed. You see, before Jesus, he was naked. But after Jesus, he was clothed. Now, I wonder, where did he get the clothes from? How did he cover himself? He was naked before, and he didn't go home. He, after he got saved, he sat at the feet of Jesus. Where did he get clothes from? The Bible doesn't tell me, but I can imagine Jesus taking his coat off and put it in, put it in over him, covering him. So everyone that trusts us in Jesus is covered by his blood, is covered by his righteousness, is clothed in him. So he doesn't have to be ashamed anymore. So he doesn't have to hide anymore because he's clothed in Jesus' righteousness, in Jesus' justice. That man was that way. And the fourth thing is that he was in his right mind because he received the spirit of God, which is not a spirit of fear, but of love, of power of love, and of a sound mind. Sound mind means that he was in control. He was sober. Sober is the, post, the opposite to drunk. A drunk person has no control over anything he does, he says, or he feels, or he acts, because he has no control. Alcohol has control of him. He was drunk before, but when he received Jesus, he became sober. He became in control. He controlled his emotions, so he didn't have to be depressed or without hope anymore. He controlled his tongue. He didn't have to cry out loud anymore. He controlled his body. He controlled his feelings because he had the Spirit of God in him. You see, we need the Spirit of God. All of us receive the Spirit of God, but we need to be filled by it in order to be in control of a sound mind. And all of this, this man had after he received Jesus in his life. But another thing that I want to say, tell you about this man, is that all of those things were evident. He didn't need to go telling people, I am changed. 
I am transformed. Because people could see that from a distance. When those men came from the city, they saw that this man was sitting. They saw that this man was clothed. And they saw that this man was in his right mind. He didn't tell them. They saw it because it was evident. You see, people should know that we are Christian because we should be different. Even without telling them, they should recognize a difference in us, in how we talk, in how we dress, in how we relate with each other, in where we go, who are our relations, what kind of friendships we have, what we post on Facebook, what we tweet in Twitter, what we post on Instagram, and all those kinds of things. They should see something different in us. Somebody say, your acts speak so loudly that I cannot hear your words. Sometimes what we say doesn't agree with what we do. If we are Christians, we don't need to say if we act. And when we act accordingly to the word of God, to the spirit of God in us, we don't need to tell people. They are going to ask us, what is it in you? so different because I like it and I want to have it. If God has so power, so great a power to change your life, he can change mine too. He had a great power to transform the life of this man who was a total wreck. Made him a man of purpose. Made him a man of hope. Made him a useful you see, the power of God is an enabling power. That man also showed that he was transformed in not doing what he wanted to do. Before, he was a rebellious man. After that, he was a submissive, humble man. He wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to go with Jesus, but Jesus told him, no. You go back to, the, to your house, to your family. And tell them how great things had God done unto you. You see, sometimes we feel that God is calling us to do something. But when we ask God to, to send us or to help us to do what we think he's calling us to do. And he says, no, I want you to do this other thing. Maybe you think that he is calling you to Mexico. And he says, no, I want you to go and preach to your neighbor. Lord, I don't want to preach to my neighbor. I want to preach in Mexico. Or... Maybe you think that you want to go to this job and the Lord tells you, no, I don't want you to, do, to go to that job. I want you to go to this other job. And sometimes we become rebellious and say, well, if you don't want me to go to Mexico, then I won't go to anywhere. I will stay where I am and do nothing. Sometimes we think that if it's not what I want, that the Lord allows me to do, that then I won't do anything at all. That is not proper. That is not right. This man said, I want to go with you. But Jesus told him, no, you go to your, your people. And tell your people, and the Bible says that he did. He went where the Lord sent him to do. And he went and published. The word published, the word show, because the Lord told him, go and show your people. Show to, the, to, to your house. The word show means tell to an end. Don't retain nothing. Tell everything with every detail. Tell everybody what the Lord has done in your life. And he went and he published it with his family, but also through all the city, how great things had God done unto him. So, if the Lord has transformed you, if the gospel has come into your life and you have believed in the gospel, so you have received the power of God and he has transformed your life. He has regenerated you. He has made you new. You are a new creature. 
And that should be evident in the way you act, in the way you speak, and the way you dress, in the way you think, in the way you relate to everybody. That should be evident in your life every day, but also in the way you serve God. What are you doing to tell others? You might say, God hasn't told me to do it. No, he has told you. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Go ye into all the nations and preach the gospel to every creature, to every nation. He has told you to do. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes unto you and you will be witnesses. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. So he has told you to do. He has told you what you need to do. You are a missionary. Maybe not to Mexico. Maybe not to Guatemala or Venezuela or China or England or Spain. But you are a missionary anyway. Start with your own house. Is everybody in your home safe? All your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, are they safe? Are they showing the power of God in their lives? Is your neighbor safe? Have you knocked on your neighbor's door and told him, hey, you are possessed by demons? He might not like it, but it's the truth. But I know who can clean you and change your life. Had you gone to your friend in school and told him about Jesus, your teacher? No, they, they, they don't let me speak in the school. Is that going to stop you? Have you shared with your friends? Invite him for a cup of tea at your house, for a cup of coffee, and tell them about Jesus. Buy him lunch one day and tell him about Jesus. Show, tell to an end, don't retain nothing. If God has transformed you, you have an obligation. You have a responsibility towards those who are lost. You see, Paul said about the gospel of Christ, I am not ashamed. Sometimes Christians are ashamed as if the gospel wasn't powerful enough. But it's powerful. It's dynamite. It's powerful. It's dynamo. It can transform and it can give life. So, if God, has gone, if God has done great things in your life, you need to tell what God has done to you. Pastor, thank you very much for your attention and for the opportunity.